How you doing everybody? This is Jay Nanda, San Antonio Metal Music Examiner, coming to you from Corpus Christi Concrete Street Amphitheater Gigantor 2013 here with half of the band Newstead. Of course, Mike Mushak. The Mushaga. better half. <laughs> <laughs> we're the cute half. More hands than anyone. Yeah, yeah, Mike Mushak on guitar, of course, and you know the namesake, Mr. Jason Newstead himself, guys. How, you How are you? Welcome. Yeah, how are you? It's it's great to see you. Good. Yes, it's absolutely fantastic to have you guys here. Welcome to South Texas. Thank you. And, um, you know, I just wanted to ask you first off the bat, Jason, you know, obviously the band released a four-song EP a few months ago called Metal, and, uh, and then Mike came on board, and the full-length album, Heavy Metal Music, will be out August 6th, so go ahead and check that out. Um, can you just kind of give a quick summation to start out, Jason, as far as a timeline of, like, when you started to put the band together, how you found, you know, the other guys, Jason, Jesse, and Jesus, and just what your line of thinking was. Sure. It was August of, uh, 2012, I started Gigantor, the bands are selected by Dave Mustaine, and of course, you know, it's an interesting dynamic, yours and his history, past with Metallica in your respective camps. Sure. Obviously, you guys never played in Metallica together, so I'm curious as to, you know, your history as to when you began to, you know, combine with Dave and know each other as friends, not yeah. just musically. Uh, 29 years ago was the first time that Dave and I played together, and uh, he gave, <coughs> excuse me, Flotsam and Jetsam the first opportunity to play outside of Arizona. The first show we ever played in California was opening for Megadeth. Wow. And so that, uh, it's now kind of a completed circle that we've done. Now we're back to opening for David. Um, kind of interesting like that. We've always had positive vibrations. There's never been any kind of negative thing between Dave and I in 30 years. So we've always been friends, and he, uh, I'll never forget the chance that he gave us back then. But as far as the Metallica tie, you know, we, we played together at the reunion thing yeah. in December 2011, which was pretty awesome. I mean, really pretty special. Um, but there are things, we've supported each other uh, through, um, I mean, just either flying each other's flags, talking good, talking positive about each other through all the time. So that's long history yeah. and, and strong history. And it's a great segue because I was just about to ask you, I did purchase legally for my iPod all four of those 30th anniversary shows that you were at all four nights um, with Metallica in December of 2011. Was that 
kind of the impetus for starting the band? Because yeah. when you, when you when a musician disappears for a while and then he comes back in whatever form, he thinks I mean, there's probably got to be somewhere in your mind where you're like, hey, will the fans still react to me the way they did when I was in Metallica? Will they still remember me? Did you have sure. any of those moments? And was that for show gig at the anniversary? Because those fans were chanting your name like crazy, and it had to feel good. Was that the first chance that you said, hey, this might work if I go out on my own again? Yes. Um, <laughs> short answer, yes. I've been playing Next some question. shows with uh, Papa Wheelie <laughs> in November, and Lars called up and kept we were done with those shows. And I kind of got excited about doing that again. It was kind of fun. We played a couple of cool ones, just loose, stony metal jams, and the people were responding. And I was kind of a funny thing, tasting it just a little bit. Yeah. And then we did the Metallica thing, and there's no way I could have predicted the reaction. Beyond. I mean, you, you saw it, you heard it, it's, it was unbelievable. Um, it took me over. Uh, it was genuine epiphany. Epiphany. <laughs> epiphany. Like, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's got that. <laughs> fucking epiphany. <laughs> Get out the dictionary, yeah. look it up. It's <laughs> <laughs> the Newstead dictionary. I was Levin Matayton. I got it. <laughs> anyway, that, that really was what it was. There was so, so much love and so much energy, and I said, this is, you know, obviously, this is what you're supposed to be yeah. doing. But, Obviously, what we're supposed to be doing with your life. Sure. So, um, yeah, not long after that, sort of put it all together. I first I had to think about the options of reality. I pick out a super group, get a bunch of dudes from a whole bunch of other bands that were really big, and make this thing, and everybody comes with their egos and their little baggage and their bullshit. Nah, maybe not that. Flotsam and Jetsam. I like mean, Flotsam and Jetsam. Made them January of 2012, put the original Flotsam together in Phoenix, and we played around the Doomsday record. About a month later, did it again. Played around the Doomsday record. Wasn't going to quite work out. Glad to see each other. Glad to jam together. But our lives are different. So I started thinking about this. Got Jesus and Jesse together. So the three of us made that EP, and then Mike came in. Four of us made the LP, and that's that. So it was really I had to exercise my options after the Metallica thing, and it all, you know, transpired. And for me, and now that it's happening, it seems perfect. There's destiny in this. There's karmatic destiny in this. There's some reason to scream me back into it now that we're here now. And there might be some people out there who might say, you know. One thing Metallica may miss since you, your departure was the vocals. I mean, you say, and background vocals, of course. Um, they don't get that as much with Robert, if at all, these days. And, of course, you sang a lot live back in the day, Whiplash and Parts of Creeping Death and so forth. Yeah. Maybe not on the same level as Van Halen currently missing Michael Anthony's background vocals. That's, that but would take some doing. <laughs> yeah, but, that um, some doing. but that's got to make you feel good. And then, you know, it segues into your new band, Newstead. Yeah. The fact that you are back as a singer, not just a bassist. Mm -hmm. So it's got to feel good coming full circle, kind of, don't you think? For sure. Um, no diss to any Metallica stuff, and Robert's a great player, and they're, they're a good band that still sets the standards for our style of music, so that's just that. You know, he has strings that I don't have, so you know, we got to keep that all in perspective, too. Um, but as far as the singing through time, you know, in, say in 88, I sang one verse of Whiplash, and by 90, it was two verses, and by 96, it was three verses, by the end, by 2000, sing the whole song. Right. So it's that kind of transpired over time for different reasons. James to rest his throat, for me to step up, to add dimension to the band, whatever, things like that. So, um, there are six Metallica songs that I feel righteous about being able to perform in this band at this juncture. There are a lot of cover songs that Metallica made famous that we can fuck with over time, like, you know, Misfit stuff and King sure. Diamond like this, but, uh, Creeping Death because of the singing, that's just exactly what we're talking about, yeah. that whole thing, that's mine. I made that my own. Even though they wrote it, I made that my own. And Whiplash, I made my own. And Seek and Destroy, I made my own by singing. So we can mess with any of those at any given time. And writing credits, Misery, uh, Wild Things, and Blackened, we can mess with those whenever we want. So that's kind of, we, we pepper it up a little bit. And today we'll have a set with Whiplash. You know, so that's, awesome. that's kind of our thing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, people, people don't seem to mind. They're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're I wonder why that is. They're pretty good with it. They're pretty good with it. When they hear that, da -da -da, they're like, oh, okay. Well, hey, I'm in. Yeah. Green light. <laughs> Well, hey, we're going to let the guys go. Giganter is about to get going here in Corpus Christi. If they haven't reached your city yet, go out and check them out. And, of course, pick up Newstead's new album, August 6th, Heavy Metal Music. So thank you very much, Mike. Thank Jason, it's great to have you here. Cheers. Welcome back to South Texas, like thank I said. Y'all, NewsteadHeavyMetal.com. Check it all out for tour dates, listen to metal T-shirts, and cool archival recordings from the Chop House. There you go, straight from the horse's mouth. So from, <laughs> for the guys in Newstead, Jay Nanda, San Antonio Metal Music Examiner. Until next time, don't hang them out to dry. Hold them up high. That's right. <laughs>